Welcome back to Europe, let's cooperate. Europe, let's cooperate. It's an event dedicated to the EU Interregional Cooperation Program, Interreg Europe. For the ones who are joining us today, my name is Irma Stroskaita Deni. I am head of communication unit at the Interreg Europe Program, and I will continue to moderate this event also today. Yesterday, with all of you, uh, we talked what is Interreg Europe program. We talked about the power of interregional cooperation. All of you told what value it brings, and you learned that the future of the program is in your hands, and you can contribute. The program launched the survey, and you can say your opinion on what you like about the program and what you want to change. Together with my colleagues, we also talked about the opportunities Interreg Europe program can bring. We discussed that the program has interregional cooperation programs and the policy learning platform. Together with you, we launched the third call of project proposals. And now you know that the deadline is the 7th of June. You also know that program is ready to assist you to prepare your project applications. So use this support the program is providing. We could see you had a really great time yesterday, uh, talking with the others, discussing your project ideas, also going to the three exciting study visits to get inspiration from this lovely city of Antwerp. We are here today at 9 o'clock sharp for an important mission. An important mission for the next session for us is to talk about the policy learning platform. And to start the session, I would like to invite you to watch the video about the policy learning platform. Imagine if you could easily find solutions to make your region or city smarter, greener, better connected, more social, and closer to citizens. The Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform can help you access knowledge about the latest policy trends, discover expert validated good practices from all over Europe, find solutions in our peer review, Get tailored support from our expert team. We can connect you with the right people and organizations. Together, we will find ways to solve your region's or city's challenges. Start your policy learning journey today. Some of you yesterday uh, might have decided uh, that indeed you have challenges and you need to find solutions to them really, really quickly. And this is what is the policy learning platform about. And there are people who drive this platform forward. So it's my pleasure to invite on this stage three important people who drive the policy learning platform activities. Please applause and let's welcome on the stage the project managers and two thematic managers, Torsten Kollisch, Elena Ferrario, and Antoine de Canau. Oh, <laughs> good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. 
uh, you can't be better people to open this box. Are you ready for that? We are. I'm very excited. Yeah. But Torsten, before we do that, could you summarize and tell in brief, indeed, what is the policy learning platform? Just to remind, because some people are joining only this event today and might not heard what we were discussing yesterday. Yes. Thank you, Irma. I think, in essence, the policy learning platform is about all our colleagues, our community members, here in the room and beyond, all the people working with commitment for better local and regional development policies. And I see the colleagues from Suom and Lina, from Finland, from Pomorski, from Minsko, Bazowski in Poland, from Frisia and the Netherlands. You see, Irma, we can easily get lost. And therefore, we have built a platform. We have built a platform on three pillars facilitating access to knowledge, to people, and to expert support, targeted services we will discuss later. Okay. Great, Orsten. Indeed, you are completely right that this community, a large community we have, consists of uh, our approved projects. We have uh, about 2,400 organizations that usually are uh, involved in the projects we co-finance during each uh, period. Uh, Elena, but could you tell us, if the policy learning platform is to whom? Is it only to the people involved in the project or it's beyond? It's open to everyone? Mm -hmm. Yes, the policy learning platform is open to any policymakers in Europe and beyond. So all local, regional, national authorities uh, are welcome to join, uh, to join the platform. And therefore, it's not only for project partners, but it's open to non-partners of Interregio projects. And actually, the platform is maybe the nice and very, it's a good opportunity as an entry door for those organizations that are uh, maybe not yet involved in projects to still explore uh, interregional cooperation. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Antoine, by the way, uh, are you ready, all of you, to open this treasure box? Well, I feel it's a lot of pressure on my shoulders, but I'll try my best. Okay, <laughs> great. I think we are all impatiently looking to see what is inside this golden box. So I leave you all three on the stage to open it and to share this treasure with all our participants of today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. I think, Elena, quite exciting. Could you sleep last night? No, not at all. <laughs> I think you have to help me opening. Yes, and Antoine, yes. you right. may be the that. first one let's looking what we have inside. Ready, Elena? Yeah, I am. OK, let's imagine drums, ladies drums. and gentlemen. Drums. And wow. there's a lot in there. Wow, wow, wow. Oh. All right. Are you ready? So I give you 3,200 good practices <laughs> coming from our regions and beyond. Oh. They're coming from you. They're coming from you. We have our platform experts. They screen through the good practice database and they validate all of them. They also select the most prominent features of them all. Furthermore, you also have the opportunity to access these good practices. Uh, you access directly the database and you can also see who is the owner of the good practice and you can contact them to see how to best replicate them inside of your region. Excellent. But Antoine, let's, let's have a deeper look. Is there more? There is indeed. I give you now 500 publications <laughs> with various formats. So, for publications, we have very many different options. We have policy briefs providing a thorough analysis on various topics. We also have editorial commenting on the last EU trends. And last but not least, we also have reports for all of our events. Um, we have in our discovery policy zone, for example, of the latest one, which we invite you to check. So this is available to you for free on our website. So we really invite you to check them 
on your own time, at your own pace, and according to your own needs. Okay. I Maybe, Elena, now you take a deeper look. Mm. Yes. Oh, it looks heavy, right? Very, very heavy. Oh, my goodness. Wait, wait. Are we not I can help you. I can help yes, you. Yes, yes. Both, both together. One, two, three. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> 13,000 practitioners of regional development policies and 10,000 organizations that are part of Internet Europe. So this is Internet Europe and you are part of it, you are a member of our community, and by being a member of our community, you can um, expand your networks, access, as um, Antoine said, um, all other members of the community by connecting with them, join our events, and of course, also co-create and co-shape the uh, platform activities and agenda. But there is more, <laughs> there is more. Look at this, 180 policy learning events. So we also have the possibility for you to join our events. We organize on average two to three webinars, so online events per month. They are dedicated to different thematic areas of the program and you can there discover interesting good practices coming from Internet Europe projects, but also connect again with uh, other peers across Europe. We also organize on-site workshops where we bring together project partners from Internet Europe. And uh, again, we dive deep into one or the other uh, topic of the program. Uh, example, later on this spring, um, we will explore together circularity in um, construction sector, uh, renovation in buildings, um, entrepreneurship in um, areas hit by the population, uh, what else, digitalization of the public sector. So I warmly invite you to join us again in the policy discovery zone and um, get more details on all these events. Thorsten, we have spoken about good practices, events, mm -hmm. um, publications, but what if some organizations want to go deeper, want to uh, have a very specific challenge and need specific solutions for that. Can you? I guess we should us? have a look again in our treasury what? chest, right? And indeed, uh, indeed, 44 matchmakings and 75 peer reviews organized since 2019. These are what we call our expert support opportunities, but you may wonder what matchmaking peer review, what is this? These are very targeted, indeed, Elena, very tailored uh, exchange processes. We could also say small policy learning journeys, indeed, directly addressing questions, challenges you have at your doorste uh, doorstep in your region, your city. It's a bit different to the support we know from Interreg, usually we support projects, offer funding, yesterday the third call was launched, but here not the funding, rather the moderation, facilitation of the exchange process is at the heart of our support with our team of experts. Um, free of charge, easily accessible, meaning very short uh, application form, two pages we can prepare together. Um, and therefore, indeed, I think very well suited, not only, but also for small organizations with very limited resources, or for newcomers. An opportunity, because with our experts, we accompany the process from A to Z, indeed an opportunity to gain first experience in the world of European cooperation. But you may wonder, okay, how does this work in practice? We support the identification of peers, meaning like-minded colleagues from all across Europe, uh, working with you on the challenges, the questions you have put on our table. Therefore, what you can expect from our matchmakings and peer reviews is actually pan-European teamwork. Teamwork with like-minded colleagues. The matchmakings is an appetizer. We team up usually online for two hours to discuss your question, your need. And for the peer reviews, you also see here on the screen, we dive deeper. We spent nearly two days jointly drafting policy recommendations with you, your local stakeholders, your European peers, uh, recommendations helping you to better address your 
challenges and needs. But now, while I think my microphone is falling apart, let's hope you can still hear me. Yeah. Yes, okay. You may still wonder, how does this work in practice? So let's hear from two esteemed community members, uh, from two policy practitioners, how they have experienced uh, working with the platform in previous years. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad, delighted to welcome Elena Mengotti and Joachim Crespo on stage. Please give them a warm applause. Elena, Joaquin. Thank you. Thanks to both of you joining us this morning here in this beautiful setting. I hope you enjoyed yesterday. Yes, hello. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Elena, you are head of legal affairs, uh, financial affairs, EU affairs at the de Department of Culture in the autonomous region of Friuli. Um, you helped me with the name? Venezia Giulia. Venezia Giulia, thank you. Uh, you're also lead partner of the Cherry Project, so you know Interreg Europe by heart. Uh, but if you look at the platform, indeed, you told us, all started with the help desk. You submitted to us uh, to look for good practices, for your colleagues in the Mediterranean, to look for good practices on CCIs, cultural and creative industries. And now, uh, for several years now, you have been a regular speaker uh, in our webinars, e workshops, you have been peer in peer reviews, but I'm sure you have a busy calendar in your office, no doubt. So please tell us, tell our colleagues, what motivates you to dedicate your precious working time to interregional cooperation, sharing your expertise with other colleagues in Europe? Thank you, Thorsten. Well, you know, we live in a fast-changing world, in a fast-changing society. We are in charge of regional policies on our territory, dealing with culture and sports, dealing with companies, industries, operators, companies in different fields. So, you know, we need to be updated yeah. on new trends, on solutions adapted by other regional entities uh, all over Europe uh, and also beyond. We need uh, to be uh, aware of uh, new trends uh, on cultural policies, especially in my case. So the policy learning platform provides me mm -hmm. the chance to learn and uh, to adapt our policies on what is happening. Okay. Elena, let's make this concrete. I think we all agree. Uh, I think colleagues can agree. That's why we are here today. But let's make this concrete. I think last year you were a peer in a peer review for Région Sud, a region in southern France, indeed supporting them in the development of their CCI policies. Correct. Uh, in simple words, what was in for you and your region? What did you take, take back home from this exchange uh, in southern France? Well, it was a really interesting peer review. Mm -hmm. I was uh, with other experts, of course. So the first thing, thing I learned is that uh, dealing with the cultural and creative industries uh, all over Europe, uh, we have the same issues to face. But uh, going into depth of uh, the problem, uh, what I learned concretely was uh, thanks to the exchange with other experts, hearing from them, was really useful. Uh, with me, there was uh, also a, an Austrian expert, Christina. She was here y yesterday, and so I met her by chance. Uh, and uh, I uh, learned about uh, their Austrian experience on val vouchers to support uh, startups. And uh, I've never applied vouchers in our policies, in cultural policies. And I understood conc very concretely what a voucher is uh, from my perspective to support CCIs. So going back home, I tried to apply it in our department. So I talked with my colleagues and now we are introducing the same voucher uh, in our calls uh, funded by ERDF fundings. 
So, while I had lost my microphone, as you can see, but we improvise, uh, as <laughs> always, in interregional cooperation. I think very nice and very tangible yeah. result. Yes. Uh, by the way, Elena, uh, we need to capture uh, in our monitoring. No, but also, dear ladies and gentlemen, I think showing the win-win character, uh, whether you participate as host, as stakeholder or peer, when you participate in interregional learning, I think all parties, they gain. Huh? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And Joaquim, you are the policy and project manager working at the development agency of Aragon, so part of the Aragon yeah. government in Spain. Mm -hmm. And you as well, you're involved in projects, you have been active in the community for many years. Mm -hmm. And as we have heard uh, from Antoine and Elena, we can do policy learning in different ways. And as you have told me before, I quote you, you love reading our policy briefs. Well, love, love, but uh, <laughs> whenever I have to address a specific issue uh, from the strategic point of view, uh, I always look to see if there is a policy brief uh, on the topic I have to deal with. And in that case, uh, with the expert analysis and the good practices, uh, it's always an inspiration point uh, for the work to be done and not invent the wheel. Okay. And you were one of our first peer review beneficiaries. Now you see we have reached 75. I think you were one of the first. Your region is challenged uh, by depopulation, uh, demographic decline, and but you take measures to keep SMEs alive, especially in the traditional sectors, digitalization you support. This was a topic we addressed with peers from all around Europe. Maybe you can briefly share uh, your peer review journey and indeed the benefits for your work in the region. Yeah, well, f first thing that the peer review was online because of mm. the COVID, it was a big challenge. And, and well, uh, the peer review allowed us to improve the development process of the uh, smart specialization strategy. And we improved the, the activities in three, three main uh, area. So the first one is the allow the facilitate and the engagement of the stakeholders uh, in the smart specialization study process uh, because uh, they feel part of the of the activity so the work were much uh, easier and the secondly was that uh, it's not obvious now what well, is obvious now as I mean but uh, the thing is that uh, in our approach the municipality are not involved in that process Mm -hmm. And thanks to the peer review, uh, we involved them in a sector like agri-food sector in a depopulated area like Aragon. That is a very good advice for us. And finally, thanks to the peer review, uh, we changed, uh, uh, we improved the communication plan of the S3 because at the beginning uh, it was focused only in 13th uh, uh, players of the Aragon innovation ecosystem. And finally, well, we opened the we open the mind and mm -hmm. we communicate to all the civil society. And well, thanks to the learning and to the improvement, I would like to apply for a second peer review, but this time on site. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we are ready to work with you again. I think big applause for Elena and Joaquin. Thank thanks. You. Thank you. And Thanks for sharing your experience. Thank you for joining us on stage. What I really would like to say, I think in the name of the entire team, when we see working with you, with local regional policymakers, and we see your commitment to cooperation and using the results of cooperation in your day-to-day -day work, honestly, this is really fuel and motivation for us to keep going. Therefore, for my side as well, please keep going. Thank you once again. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, and indeed, what we can say, uh, we heard about peer review in southern France, plus 30 degrees, but now I'm looking at my colleague Laura, minus 15 degrees last November in uh, central Sweden, in Jämtland. I can say the peer review methodology works under all conditions. Of course, an exchange of two days, you may not always trigger policy change. I mean, we, have this, we follow the same objectives as our projects. Uh, we want to improve local and regional um, policies. But very often we see amazing results, like better startup support in Catalonia, 
circular economy in Waminsko Mazurski in Poland or business acceleration scheme in Tartu, Estonia. So very often, indeed, very promising results deriving from the work. And as you said, Joachim, very often, thanks to the stakeholder involvement, uh, our activities allow. But Elena, now we have spoken about the value of our expert support offers, the matchmaking, the peer reviews, but what if we see that actually our beneficiaries need something else? Yes, the very good thing about the platform is that it is a very flexible tool. So we are there to listen to your needs and to find ways to best accommodate your needs with uh, adapted services. You can contact us anytime. Today, of course, we are all here to meet you. But also, um, in the coming days, the help desks um, are the best and easiest way to get in contact with our team of experts and um, make use of this sort of um, human-powered uh, search engine, basically a sort of a Google for regional development policies. You ask us any question and we try to uh -huh. um, provide you with the best possible answer that is built on the wealth of knowledge coming from this treasure box. We have, um, I think, revealed all its content, and now maybe it's time to present the team. Indeed, I am back to the stage, Elena, but I want to make sure that really there is nothing in this box. I can check, please. Mm, <laughs> I'm not sure. I think if the people we want to invite off the stage were fitting there, they were there because they are a big treasure for the program. And those are thematic managers. No, those are thematic experts we have at the policy learning platform. Please, all of you, join us on the stage. Elena, uh, yes. Yes. So, Elena, Torsten, Antoine, uh, you revealed what resources the policy learning platform has in this box. You also talked about the experts. But I wonder, we learned indeed that uh, policy learning platform is a great alternative for everyone who is looking to fast solutions. Let's see, I have a challenge now. I don't have time to work on the interregional cooperation program to build the partnership and then to work for, I really need to, to need a solution now. So indeed with my challenge, I write to you, to the policy learning platform, I see my challenge is this following. Can you help me to invite other people that uh, can come to help me to, to make, basically connect me with the others? You say, yes, we can do. I also might decide, oh, I need some more to go a bit more forward. And then you could say, yeah, we can also propose you a peer review so that you, I describe the problem, I come to you, and then you bring other regions to my region and we work for two days on this uh, specific policy challenge to find the solutions. But indeed, it's good to know that uh, it's good for me to know and it's good for participants to know if I have a specific challenge to whom indeed I should address. For example, if I am working on creative industries, who are those persons I should talk with? Sure. So this is the perfect opportunity for you to meet the team, to see who they are. They have a nice badge. I hope all of you are wearing it, almost all of you. Ask me. This is the, the badge of the thematic experts. And if you need to discuss any topic related to Smarter Europe, then you can contact Marc, Arnaud, René, and Luc. So these are the ones. If you have policy challenge related to greener Europe, you can definitely reach out to Katarina, to Astrid, to Magda, and to Simon. Mm -hmm. Today we have Eric representing social Europe, more social Europe. So if for any topic on this, you have your guy. And for Europe closer to citizen and governance, we had all of the team 
working depending on your need. Thank you very much. Now we know uh, to whom to go if we want to talk for about specific topic during this event. Indeed, for the ones who will forget and want to connect with us later, the policy learning platform also has a specific form on our website. So you send a request and then it's automatically directed to the right person. So it's really, really easy to use. We will continue to talk about the policy learning platform today as this morning is dedicated to this amazing uh, opportunity uh, for all of you. And we will run indeed uh, several uh, talks in our Let's Talk Zone where we'll talk in deep, deeply at 10 o'clock about the expert services. At 10.30 we'll talk about the policy solutions. At 10.30 we talk about the thematic events. There are also uh, three parallel sessions, so in total six parallel sessions uh, we run together with our experts at 10 and at 11 that are happening uh, upstairs and you can join and get inspired indeed on the resources that were generated by our uh, approved projects and beyond. Uh, experts also will be waiting uh, you to talk in the policy learning expert zone. And some of uh, them you will be meeting during our study visits, uh, three study visits that uh, we organize also similar like yesterday today. And important information for the ones who are joining those study visits that you need to be sharp at uh, uh, 9.50 outside uh, the venue uh, to catch the buses and to go there. There are s the, We saw that there are some places left, so if someone registered and didn't register and are eager to join, you can check with the colleagues responsible um, wh what opportunities are to join the study visits of today. With this, indeed, uh, information. You know that uh, experts are, ye are here today and you shall benefit from their presence uh, and ask the questions if you have. And I'm sure that now with this uh, you are all inspired and are eager to explore all the resources the policy learning uh, platform is offering you. This session is a concluding session, and indeed, um, it's the last time indeed we meet in this uh, big uh, plenary room all together, because afterwards you will be enjoying activities, uh, the Zoom in sessions, the study visits, and we'll come back only for lunch. Uh, so I would like to use this opportunity also to invite on the stage all the other people, first of all, that are together with the policy learning platform and are contributing to organize all the activities, and also to invite all my colleagues who are indeed behind of organization of this event, who were uh, together with you yesterday running the consultations and taking care uh, of you during this those two days. Please, my dear colleagues, uh, join me on the stage. Yep. And now, as all this amazing team is on the stage, it's time to invite our program director, Erin Siveris. <laughs> Good morning, Erin. Good morning, Emma. <laughs> How are you today? As good as yesterday, so very happy, very good. Are you proud of this amazing team you have? Yes, I am. And you see the team, all the people behind the work today, yesterday, day before yesterday. Uh, I'm very proud of this uh, team, very happy to have this engaged 
and hardworking uh, group of people. So big thank you to all of you for the work done. A big thank you also to you. You were here, um, you are here today. Most of you were already here yesterday and some also the day before, day before yesterday. You brought the vibe, the spirit, the engagement in working together to network, to uh, work with other regions, exchange, transfer good practice. This is what the program is for. Use the rest of the day to further connect, see what the services of the policy learning platform offers, see what the program offers, go on, connect, and I think we are all on the same page that cooperation, working together is needed now more than ever. So a big thank you to you and before we close, a very big thank you to Irma and her team in the background, Irma, thank you very much for all uh, the work done and the uh, excellent moderation. Yes. Thank you very much, Erwin. Thank you also to all technical team that is supporting us to organize this event. As it's really the last time we are all together, I think we, um, it's good to refer to the slogan of our event and the title of our event that says, Europe, let's cooperate. It's really an invitation to use the benefits of the interregional cooperation program, Interreg Europe, to get involved in our interregional cooperation projects, to get involved in the policy learning platform activities. And that's why you are here. So it's just that we continue to be in touch and we all together make our Europe, our regions better. Thank you to all of you for coming to this event and <laughs> and enjoy the next upcoming activities. Thanks once more. Yes. No, 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 no. Photo. Photo.